All right, how are we all doing? You guys good? Yeah? You guys had a few shots? Hey? I feel a little... Huh? Yeah? Right on! Yeah! I mean, it is a celebration. Give her by the river! Hey! This is fucking Canada right here, man. Bitches! Correct! It's a celebration, bitches! Show time over your titties! Ziggy diggy doom! Ziggy diggy doom! Welcome back, everybody, to the Nerdgasm. As always, I am your host, Charles Fernandez. Oh, what? I have a huge episode of the Nerdgasm for you. Uh, this issue is officially issue 50 of the Nerdgasm. That's right, issue 50. I'm proud that I'm 50 years old, and I like to kick, stretch, and kick. I'm 50, 50 years old, 50 years old. And not only is it issue 50, but we are officially in year five of the Nerdgasm. <laughs> so, in regards to all that, on this issue of the Nerdgasm, I'm doing a review roundup of 2021 so far. All right, so let's start reviewing stuff and let's just get right to it. Shit. Uh -huh. You being a superhero is the coolest. First up, we're looking at the first big release of the year, an absolute wild card with WandaVision, Marvel's first big dive into the TV format and the first main Marvel launch for Disney+. This show was an epic surprise. Phase 4 is all about magic and the exploration of way deeper lore of the Marvel Universe. After Endgame, it's pretty much all about how far down the MCU hole we can go. Yes, the beginning of the show is very different and a tribute to a lot of 1950s sitcoms, so for all the millennials that can't comprehend this and never finish the show, fuck you. It only stays like this in the first episode, and I promise you it is with good reason, so fucking keep watching it. The performances, character development, story plot, and production is incredible. It's exactly what you would expect from all that Disney money. Each episode feels like an MCU movie, and you really feel that quality. This is easily the best performance from Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany as these characters. All the supporting cast was awesome, and bringing back Kat Dennings was a great way to tie it back into Phase 1. So these are the big standouts for me with this show. Bringing back Evan Peters as Quicksilver, and Disney using the cheekiest of ways to remind us, oh yeah, they own Fox now, and the X-Men are on their way. We definitely love and prefer Evan Peters' Quicksilver, and his dynamic with Wanda and her family. I never in a million years expected this character addition, and I loved every second of it. And you can't think of WandaVision without thinking of Katherine Hahn as Agatha Harkness. She is such an incredible actor, and just hearing that she is playing a role in this show got me excited. I've been a fan of hers for so long, and her MCU debut did not disappoint. Not only does she play one of the most badass witches ever, from the first time she is on screen to her big badass reveal, easily one of the best MCU villains yet. I just love that they made such a point to keep her alive at the end and to basically insinuate that she is gonna return. You have, you have no idea what you've unleashed. You're gonna need me. I mean, I feel like she'll definitely be needed in Multiverse of Madness. Eh? Speaking of which, that Scarlet Witch transformation slash reveal was so damn good. It was exactly like a comic book reveal. It's like the MCU's version of Goku turning Super Saiyan. 
And I love finally seeing Wanda fully harness her power and embrace the Scarlet Witch. It's long overdue, but totally worth the wait. Oh, and she is definitely searching through the multiverse at the end. And you know that's definitely going right into Multiverse of Madness. I can't fucking wait. Can we just have that movie already? Come on! Vision versus Vision, and that final confrontation with them is awesome. Not only is the action great, but the dialogue between them is amazing. And the fact that there is a Vision still alive is really wild. Loved Monica's storyline, especially with seeing a whole other perspective of returning from the blip. One of my favorite scenes in the MCU. And I loved seeing her transformation into a Marvel and how they so easily set up the Marvels movie and the Secret Invasion series. Pretty sure she is going to see Nick Fury at the end and we already know that he's in Secret Invasion and in the Marvels movie. You're a smart motherfucker, that's right. If you haven't figured it out yet, you should definitely watch WandaVision and see how wild the MCU is getting. Next we have The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Marvel's second TV series release for Disney+. WandaVision is definitely a hard act to follow, and while this show wasn't as good as WandaVision, it is still worth a watch. It's really hard to compare both shows, but the outcome of Falcon and the Winter Soldier is just as important for the MCU. All I ever really wanted from this show is to see Sam and Bucky's friendship develop further and to officially have a new Captain America. And this show does both those things in epic fashion. The show itself is a bit slower than WandaVision and a lot more grounded. The Flag Smashers are pretty useless and Carly is a shitty villain. GSP shows up as the random Canadian terrorist from Captain America 2, and he has some funny moments in this show, but his character is killed off in the most useless way ever. While the Flag Smasher storyline was really lame, it did push Sam to finally embrace and become Captain America, and his reveal is so good and worth watching the show for. He kicks so much ass and brings a new style and flair to being Captain America. He found a way to make throwing a shield around even cooler, and the way they worked in the political atmosphere with Black Lives Matter and everything going on right now, it just made it that much more important for why the shield belongs to Sam, and he needs to be the one to use it. Hey, now, that's Captain America. I thought the John Walker storyline was way better and that should have just been the focus as a villain for the show. I did like seeing an evil Captain America, especially in that scene when he kills that guy with the shield. It was filmed so well and taken right out of a comic book. And who doesn't just want to see Captain Shield just covered in blood? It's insane. I did like his setup as the US agent and working for Elaine as evil Nick Fury. That was really cool. We're not gonna need a Captain America. We're gonna need a US agent. Also, it was absolutely epic to have Baron Zemo back and the memes were just incredible. I wasn't a fan of Zemo in Civil War and I thought he was a bit weak. But after this show, I'm so happy to have him back. If you go into this show with the mindset that you want to see epic chemistry with Sam and Bucky and an epic reveal of the new Captain America, you will not be disappointed. I'm so happy that we have a new Captain America and I can't wait to see him play with the rest of the MCU. Switching things up from Marvel, let's look at Kong vs. Godzilla. I'm actually really impressed with this franchise. Not only are the other entries very underrated, but it is all worth the hype and build up to the epic confrontation between Kong and Godzilla. All the parts with Kong and Godzilla are fucking great. All their battle scenes and ultimate team up is incredible. So much fan service, so much badass action, so many classic moments between them. 
The worst part of this movie is the human storyline. It's fucking horrible. It's stupid, no one matters, horrible performances, the plot sucks, it just distracts from why we are really here, which is motherfucking Godzilla and King Kong. Come on! And so much of the human storyline is nonsense, and they do such a bad job of explaining things. And this is coming from a movie about a giant ape and a giant lizard fighting each other. The in-between or Middle Earth or whatever was so fucking stupid. Why the fuck didn't everything just take place on Skull Island? They set up that Skull Island is already known for unexplainable crazy monster shit. Why not just make it all happen there? Nope. Let's just use one movie to create a whole new magical location in the center of the Earth. Yeah. You heard that right. King Kong lives in a magical realm in the center of the Earth. What. The. Fuck. So Skull Island is really Middle Earth? Are you fucking kidding me? Even what they did with the explanation of Mecha Godzilla was weak. It was so stupid. They tried too hard to make it more than what it is. It's a robot Godzilla that goes on the fritz, probably because of the latest OS update. That right there, what I just said, is a way better setup than what they actually did with that dumb AI human control, I don't know, fucking stupid. Mechagodzilla doesn't disappoint and has some really epic scenes. But even more satisfying is watching Godzilla and Kong form the ultimate team up and fuck Mechagodzilla up. Yeah. Watch this movie now, it's so good, and apparently we're getting another sequel in the rumored Son of Kong? Yeah, I have no idea what that's about, but it already has won the nerdy for weirdest sex scene ever. Alright, finally, we can discuss the long-awaited Snyder Cut of Justice League. Before I really dive into this, I have to say, yes, it is worth all these years of hype, it really is great, and it is worth your time 100%. Now, let's get right into it. This movie fucking rocked. It was so good. They should have just let Zack make his Justice League trilogy. It would have been so good. Snyder's cut makes so much sense and makes Batman vs. Superman even better now. It takes place right after Batman vs. Superman and just builds from that even more like an actual connected story should. Wow. Wow. I'm beyond shocked to say Cyborg and Flash were great standouts in this cut. They not only had purpose and solid character development, they had some solid action scenes. I've never been a huge fan of the Flash. It's nothing against him, I just never really cared. But I really loved those speedster scenes in this movie. I loved how Zack filmed it and how emotional both those hero moments are. You know me, and of course I fucking loved having more of Ben Affleck Batman. He's so fucking good, and they should have just gave him his own trilogy. Fuck! They actually made Steppenwolf a cool villain and not such a joke like the first time around. I really love the setup of Darkseid, especially that last epic stare down with him and the Justice League. It's too bad that's probably the last we'll ever see of him. The action scenes are so damn good and Superman's return is actually amazing and it makes way more sense. I do wish they let him have that Green Lantern cameo. I mean, they tried with Martian Manhunter, but it was a little off. I loved his reveal and how he looks and all that, but his reasoning is a little weak. He's been watching them for years disguised as a human, and not until now he feels they're worthy enough for him to join the Justice League. Do you not know how many times the world has been straight up fucked up because of alien battles? And that is just in the last two movies. Could have probably used your help for when Zod destroyed Metropolis or Doomsday killed Superman, but okay, 
Thanks for showing up now. I guess that's something. Anyways, other than those two minor details, this movie is a home run for me. My favorite part of the whole thing is the Injustice timeline. It's only one scene, but it is fucking awesome. The Injustice storyline is one of my favorites from DC, and it features one of the best scenes between Batman and Joker on film. It's so good that one scene actually made Jared Leto's Joker enjoyable. It actually made me want to see more of his Joker. I know, crazy. Maybe if we bug the shit out of Warner Brothers for the next five years, they will make the Injustice trilogy with this cast. I mean, only Warner Brothers is lucky enough to get a redo with one of their movies and kind of win me back. Funny enough, not their only redo this year, but I'll come back to that. We now cut to Invincible. If you haven't seen this show yet, you need to. It is such an instant classic. It is based on the comic series of the same name written by Robert Kirkman. Yes, the same Robert Kirkman that wrote the Walking Dead series. Another masterpiece. I'm Carl. And while the Walking Dead show started hopeful and really just turned into a friggin' turd. Carl! Carl! Invincible succeeds in achieving a proper adaptation. I think the fact that they made an animation and the same style as the comic shows the creative team is close with the source material. It does tweak a few things differently from the comics, just like any adaptation does, but it keeps all the heart and soul of what makes Invincible so good. I actually enjoyed a lot of these story tweaks they made for the show. It still really works for the overall story. As I said, the animation is so dope, and it's really like watching the comic come to life. And it's probably some of the most beautiful violence I've ever seen. It's beautiful and brutal. The pacing of the series is amazing. They don't waste any time and so much shit goes down in each episode. I honestly thought they were going to end the season with the massacre of the Guardians of the Globe. But nope. That's how they end the first episode. So damn good. This show has one of the greatest voice casts I've ever seen and it is casted so perfectly. I mean, just look at this list. Come on! Invincible is the best show you haven't watched yet. So guess what? Start watching it. Invincible. It'll change your life. Awesome. Best friends. Yes! Let's discuss Mortal Kombat. This movie is so good. It's not quite at the Mortal Kombat perfection level, but this is a great introduction slash first movie in a long franchise. They needed this first movie to really just put in the groundwork and set up all these characters and the world of Mortal Kombat. And I think they did a great job with that. Smart idea with centering the movie on this original character, Cole Young, specifically for this movie. He represents us, the audience, being brought into this world and having all these questions. This movie sets up the tournament and really makes us care about it and funny enough, we don't even see the actual tournament in this film. It's all world building and just epic setup. They do change some things around for this new franchise. The tournament and abilities have more explanation and plot progression, and it is very true to the video game. It's gory, it's violent, amazing. We have some epic fatalities, and I really loved all the fights and the action sequences and the soundtrack pairs with them perfectly. I thought the casting for it was perfect. Everyone played their characters to the T, and they really represented Mortal Kombat so well. I fucking loved all my faves. Scorpion and Sub-Zero were incredible. Get over here! Raiden was perfect. He's not in the movie a lot, but in his screen time, just kills it. I just loved Kano, he's always such a douche and so entertaining in the games, and he's just perfect in this movie. That was it, wasn't it? You all saw that. <laughs> ah, laser beam! Better than fireballs, you pussy! This movie is fucking awesome from start to finish, it's just so entertaining and does exactly what it should for the first movie. It makes you want more. 
I am so excited for Mortal Kombat 2. It's going to be fucking wild. They already left it on some setup with Cole going to recruit Johnny Cage. So we already know that he's coming in the second one. And please just announce Mortal Kombat 2 for fuck's sake. Now we have one of the last big shows from Marvel really setting up the multiverse with Loki. Just like WandaVision, this show was such an epic wildcard. It's so good, it sets up the multiverse more than anything so far. It's just so epic. The TVA, the existence of the multiverse, the setup for the multiverse war, the cast is unreal. Doesn't surprise me, Marvel officially announced season two for next year. They are really diving into so much Marvel lore that it is above my nerd levels and I fucking love it. Phase four is becoming unlike anything we have seen yet and this is exactly what we need and want. All the variants of Loki was so great. The humor and emotional scale of the show is on another level. It's just so good. This show is like if Marvel and Inception had a baby. Way bigger setup and tie into the Multiverse of Madness. Especially ending the season on revealing Kang the Conqueror is on his way and he's gonna make Thanos look like a little bitch. <laughs> wow. This has been one of my favorite things to come out of Marvel since Endgame and you really need to check it out. WandaVision, then Loki, amazing setup for the Multiverse of Madness. Lastly for Marvel is a little bit of a miss with Black Widow. I thought this movie was a little weak. It felt really overdue for the character and really like a pity movie for ScarJo. And like, why are we even getting a Black Widow movie now? Even without all the delays, this movie is way too late to the game. I mean, she's dead. I'm not surprised she's suing Disney. I mean, they're both rich assholes, so who really wins? But anyways, back to crap Black Widow. This movie just felt so much like a phase one movie. And after WandaVision and Loki, we need something more, something better. ScarJo and Black Widow deserved something better. The cast was great and I really loved the chemistry between all of them. Rachel Weisz is such a babe, David Harbour was perfect as Red Guardian, and I love Florence Pugh as the new Black Widow. I think she's the perfect choice. The plot was whatever, but the action scenes were really good. All the scenes between Taskmaster and Black Widow were fucking badass. I really love Taskmaster. I even really liked the twist with her origin story and making Taskmaster a woman. Olga Kurilenko is such a badass and a perfect pick for Taskmaster. But unfortunately, they pulled a typical phase one villain bullshit and wasted her character. The way the movie ends, there is no reason for Taskmaster to ever show up and what a fucking shame. Taskmaster has a long history in the Marvel Universe fucking with the Avengers. And now they just threw that all out the door. What the fuck? Why not just make an original character for the movie and throw that away at the end? Really disappointed with the handling of Taskmaster. Also with all the delays, this movie really just is a setup for the new Black Widow and Elaine or the evil Nick Fury really just creating conflict amongst the heroes. For instance, with US Agent or the evil Captain America and now getting Florence Pugh, the new Black Widow, to turn on Clint, which will probably go into the new Hawkeye show. So I guess the movie did its job? All right, now ending on a high note with Warner Brothers' second redo of the year, The Suicide Squad. Hey everybody, welcome to the Nerdgasm. The first movie holds a special place in the Nerdgasm's heart only because it was the first issue ever of the show. And as we all know, the first movie was just absolute shit. Spoiler, it sucks. But here we are, five years later, discussing their second attempt, and I am beyond happy to say they killed it with this one. In James Gunn, we thank for that. If anyone knows how to bring together a group of misfits and really make us care about it, it's him. And he did his job perfectly. This movie is so much fun and it's so entertaining. Everyone plays their part so well. A lot of surprises and a lot of surprise deaths. 
The performances are fantastic. Sly killed it voicing King Shark. I loved hating John Cena, and he played his part so well. Idris absolutely killed it, and can we just get him to play James Bond already? Come on! Harley finally got the movie and treatment she deserves. Margot killed it, and Harley is so awesome in this movie. She easily has one of the best action scenes, and it is beautifully shot. This movie is so much fun. It is surprisingly pretty emotional, and the humor never stops. Plus, I have a new love for rats. Kind of. No, not at all. You should watch this movie in theaters if you can. It's totally a theater experience. These redos are really working out for Warner Brothers. So I guess they should keep fucking up. No, that's definitely not the lesson to learn. It is interesting that James Gunn is working with both DC and Marvel. And there has been so much discussion lately about a Marvel DC crossover. And neither studio has ruled anything out. I see what you're doing, James, and I fucking love it. If anyone can map out a DC Marvel crossover, it's you, and I know you're gonna do it. In James Gunn, we trust. Well, there you have it, nerds. There is my review roundup for everything that has come out so far, for everything that I think is worth talking about. Also, as I mentioned, the year isn't over yet, so there is no way for me to actually review the year unless I could go into time. Are we in the TVA? What's up? Wow. Thanks so much for joining me on this issue of the Nerdgasm, and thank you for getting me to five years of the Nerdgasm and to issue 50. Seriously, it means everything to me. For those of you that still haven't, please subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash cfbomb. We have an Instagram page at the.nerdgasmshow. So you can find the Nerdgasm on Instagram. There's some exclusive content that you will see only on the Instagram page. And you can only get full episodes of the Nerdgasm streaming at the YouTube channel. So it's worth subscribing to both. So hit the subscribe button either here or there or fucking anywhere. And then we become best friends. Remember to stay nerdy and we'll see you next time on the Nerdgasm. Oh yeah! Guys, you know what's great about this? For reals? For the orgy tonight? That's where you aim. <laughs> yeah! Alright. Uh-oh. That's still recording. Oh, well. well.